Good evening. I'd like to uh, call to order the June 11th, 2009 meeting of the uh, Portsmouth Planning Board. Uh, this evening, um, our major item is the zoning ordinance revision, um, overview of the draft revised zoning ordinance, and the process for public review and comment. And I'll turn it over to Rick Tainter. Thank you. Well, here it is. <laughs> after, after three years. Um, so this, this is the, uh, the, the complete draft, although not the final draft. And uh, the, the purpose is really just to present this to you tonight and to talk about uh, what we suggest doing for the, the public review process, talk about how you might want to look at, look at the ordinance. Um, we know that there will be many more changes and revisions as we go along. Some of them we may be able to do uh, before presenting this to the City Council. Some of them may have to wait until after this yep. has been adopted and we move on to, uh, and we do a, a first package of revisions uh, in a year or so. Um, but it, it is, I, I feel fairly good about this. It's, it's got a lot of improvements in it. It doesn't have everything that we, we um, wanted to get in, but it was really time to put an end to the process and move on to the next step. Um, so I, I don't think you'll find too much uh, th that is uh, startling in this in this uh, document. One of the things that we did leave open-ended really at the last time we talked about things was uh, had to do with signs. So there are some changes. <laughs> there are some changes, <laughs> changes in the sign regulations. Uh, there were some some things I, I, I looked back in the minutes for guidance, and it said. Rick will review this further and get back to us. Uh, so, so that is that those types of things are in there. But we've tried to um, uh, deal with all of the open issues, uh, and and um, uh, I think we have a pretty good document here. So, um, you know, at this point, I guess I uh, would like to know what your ple pleasure is. Do you want to take a look through? We don't expect you to be at this point to be going through and reviewing every detail. Uh, we're going to be uh, going to the public, but. Um, I'm sorry, Cindy. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Rick, since there there might be public watching, mm -hmm. since people are interested sure. in zoning, yeah. it'd probably be useful to run through, even though we know the long process sure. we went through, just run through some of the key points that are in, in your oh. memo, if that's just okay yeah. with the board, just particularly in terms of the amount of process that, right. that went into this. Well, the, uh, as, as I noted in the memo, it's, it has been uh, just over three years now. It began in April 2006. Uh, you have met on this about 45 times. I counted 45 work sessions and meetings that you've you've been involved in as a planning board. Uh, we've met with the city council uh, in work sessions and meetings eight times. We've met with the conservation commission, historic district commission, sustainability committee, blue ribbon commission on housing, economic development commission, uh, and then there were innumerable uh, and lengthy meetings with uh, between the consultants and staff uh, during this whole process. Um, it, it really has been extensive, as well as as well as uh, individuals who are outside the whole process. Uh, also, during the process, you will recall that we had the formula business ordinance, the review of that, the residential density initiative PUD, which was adopted, the non-residential PUD, which was not adopted, uh, the, the building height standards in the central business A district. And we've also folded into this uh, things that are not even listed in this memo. We folded into this other work that you did and, and I worked with you on before we even started this revision. The, uh, we, when we did the review of the office research districts, we came with some revised standards for um, drive-through uses, which are now folded in here. Um, we had done the downtown overlay district and so forth. So there, there are a number of things that even beyond what's listed in this memo that uh, is, has been a process of evolution in revising the ordinance. And then um, we have the, uh, the uh, site plan review regulations, which uh, we reviewed and, and you felt very good about uh, on April 24th of 2008 and have been on the website since then, but we can't, uh, we, we couldn't adopt those until we had gotten to the point of uh, having a, a, a draft uh, zoning ordinance. So these two things, because they're so interrelated, need to be looked at together, which is why uh, the, a new copy of the site plan review regulations is in, is in your binder. We've also left a, a space, a tab in the binder, for senior housing, uh, the, the, the uh, regulations that we've proposed, zoning re uh, regulations that we've been working on in relation to Borthwick Village uh, that we will be discussing next week. And um, if, uh, as stated in the memo, if, uh, it is your, if you are in support of those, one of the options that you could take 
would be to, uh, to, to actually fold them into this document. Uh, as they're formatted now, they're formatted for the existing ordinance, but it's very little effort to reformat them for this ordinance, and we've left a placeholder for that. So we just left a tab here uh, so that you could, could have those, and when you find that placeholder in the big document, you'd just be able to flip to the new tab and, and see what's there. Um, and and we have, um, we have a, a number of um, uh, map changes that we're considering at the same time. Um, we have the referral uh, that we talked about um, in May, I believe, uh, on the property between um, the Bypass and Bartlett Street, the, that whole industrial district. Uh, and there are a number of other areas that we've, we've identified as, as potential zoning changes. We've looked at the Central Business District and the Historic District along Islington Street. Uh, and, and uh, some other areas as well. So we'll be continuing to work on those during the summer as, uh, as the, we go through the public hearing process for this. Um, the, uh, I think it's a pretty good, pretty comprehensive coverage of the process we've gone through. Um, and as I said, it's, it's really time to, to we, we can keep working until this is perfect, but we just get further and further ahead of us, and so at this point we think it's, it's almost it's almost there. So time we've been close enough to to uh, print it out as a as a unit and uh, put it out for public review. Um, we do have a proposal on a a public hearing schedule um, that we'd like to present for you, and I just pass that around now just so you can we can talk about that. Um, <coughs> So you thought you were done with work <laughs> sessions and zoning and everything. When you saw this document, your heart's lifted, and now you see this memo. <laughs> but it's not too bad. Um, what we're proposing is uh, a series of up to th up to four public hearings. Hold on, oh, sorry, I thought you were cracking my thumb. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your trigger finger, is it? <laughs> um, th so in. There are a series of uh, three meetings at the, at the beginning, and we've, we've tried to work these around um, your regular meetings and, and other um, places in the calendar. It just has, has worked out in a way that I think works pretty well. Um, all, three alternate Thursdays, July 9th, July 23rd, and August 6th, um, that would be uh, that would give people. It, it, the first one is four weeks from today, and then the last one is eight weeks from today. So it's a pretty good period to give people to, to um, uh, have a chance to review the document and, and formulate comments and questions on it. And then there would be a gap. Um, there would actually be a summer vacation in there for you, sort of. And uh, we would return on September 10th to, which is the, the second, the, the, the September 3rd is right after. Um, Labor Day. Actually, September 10th is right after Labor Day, isn't it? Is that September? Labor Day is on the uh, yeah. 7th. Yeah, so this is the first, this would be the first, um, the first Thursday after Labor Day. Um, and uh, so that would be a, a chance to, for, for us as staff to have uh, looked through all of the input that we've received and to uh, make further adjustments and present you with a, perhaps a package of, of suggested changes and, and, and talk about um, and it, wh where you want to go from there. And uh, based on the schedule, if we were at a, a good point at that, at that meeting, you might vote on the 17th, which is your regular meeting to to bring it to, to recommend it to the city council, you may we may need a, a few more weeks. But at this point, it looks like we'll be able to, uh, if nothing uh, serious and outstanding comes out, we we'd be able to uh, uh, close this out by Halloween. So, any thoughts on this? Thank you very much. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, Chris. Well, I guess an immediate question of whether these public hearings divide this into sections, give a presentation followed by a public hearing, whether they're just free for alls, um, how, what the, because I mean, I think that would make a difference in how to think about it. And I just can't see a free for all on, you know, a document this big. On the other hand, I wouldn't want to limit what people would be able to talk about at any one, but maybe there would be some way to phase them a little. Bit. Uh, Cindy? Uh, 
I think the way to approach it might be, I mean, a lot of it is kind of um, boilerplate, boring stuff that really hasn't changed a lot other than to try and make it more user friendly. I think the way to go might be to highlight some of the key issues, the key changes that would affect residents, um, businesses, and, and some of the big things that are in there. And I think the people that are going to review this and have a lot to say are people with a lot of vested interests that own property and are about to do some development, or individual residents that may be concerned and really actively review it. I, I think it might be too, I know what you're saying, it might be too challenging to break it off in pieces, but rather, you know, every time maybe we highlight the big chunks. Those are my thoughts. And, and we can, you know, produce some, some handouts, too, that are, and we intend to do that, that are highlights of the key provisions. And we can also post on the website, too. Yeah, John? Do you well, have it seems to me we've got, uh, uh, what, one, two, three, four public hearings. To give it some um, focus and clarity and debate, maybe you break up the... Uh, the ordinance and break up the zoning ordinance uh, into uh, one third, one third, one third, something like that, and go over the highlights, but focus the discussion on just that those parts of it, and uh, and then the fourth public hearing could be sort of a wrap up type uh, public hearing to go back and revisit the issues that were brought up on the sections that we discussed. I, that kind of keeps it focused because these things could drift around. And yeah, Tony, did you have a thought? Yeah, I was wondering if the handouts that we provide, maybe even published for the public um, prior to the meeting, would be in plain English. Um, the a real a real example of what it means to go from Central Business B to <coughs> excuse me mixed residential um, business on Islington Street. I know. Um, I know. I'm not. I'm on the planning board, and that doesn't jump to my mind. What difference does that mean? I know where to go and look for it real quickly, but that requires a lot of research in the public end, where they may. Um, it may not. We really want that to be open and telling what exactly is happening. So, we could have some examples. It'd be great. Cindy has a follow up, <laughs> and it's kind of a follow up to John Rice's that, and Tony's, I guess too. That, you know, maybe. A modification of what you proposed, John, is for the first meeting, do an overview of the whole thing and let the mm. public respond, and then have the next two meetings break the ordinance into half. That's fine. And have the fourth public hearing be the big overview again. And then relative to what, what you said, Tony, something I think we all really need to keep in mind is if people are really concerned about the ordinance, one, they're going to have to go do a little homework, you know, and certainly staff will be available to answer questions. but. It's really hard. There's there's so many tiny changes to go through all of them. Like you know, I'm not saying all of them. No, I know, but yeah. that's why I think if we hit the key ones, yeah. you know, we'll hopefully get some interest in the ordinance. And you know, the other thing is, all of our meetings these days, because they're televised, we're we're very transparent. I mean, there may be people that have been following this and are ready to come <coughs> out and tell us what a bad idea we had on us, an approach to signs or something. So. I mean, I think if we just do that first hearing, see what happens. It's, it's, it is such a big endeavor that we'll just have to see. And just one final note to keep in mind is that if we inadvertently changed something or instructed our consultant to change something that we later regret or we get, you know, feedback mm. that says, gee, did you really mean to do that, then that's when the board is going to say, oh, well, let's change that before we recommend it to the yeah. council. Right. Rick. Uh, I'm, I'm putting together a, um, a summary of the highlights, and it's, it's, it's sort of in a tabular form mm -hmm. with uh, the table of contents on one side and then key changes on over here. And the discussion, um, especially what you said, Tony, uh, kind of raises there are two separate things that we, we're talking about here. One is explaining what the ordinance does now, you know, you, you know, talking about what the difference is between MRB and, and CB or something like that. And that's one whole discussion. The other discussion is how we're revising the ordinance, what changes we're making. And I, I hadn't actually thought about getting into what the ordinance does now as much as really focusing on the changes that we're doing. But the types of things that I'm putting in here are, for example, uh, a number of things that are in here because they are uh, going to be 
in reaction to state law. So the, there's a section in here on small wind energy systems. There's a new law that is going into effect next month and really requires communities to adopt new zoning regulations or new regulations of some sort. So I'm, in that point, I'm just saying we're this is a new section that is being adopted in order to implement a new state law and explaining what that is. Um, in a section on, on the wetland section, uh, in terms of jurisdictional areas, we're saying this section expands the types of areas that are covered by the wetlands regulations in this, in this way. And so trying to, trying to do that. And then in other areas, I'm saying you know, how we are changing the definite, you know, what, what new signs we're going to allow, what different ways that we're, you know, the, the, the approach to the district. So I'm trying to, trying to highlight, I'm trying to say something for each item. So even with all the blanks at this point, it's 23 pages long. Um, uh, so it's, it's going to be extensive. I'm trying to say something for each item, even if just to say there's no substantive change here. We're just continuing what we were, we're doing. Um, but, but where there is a, a major, a significant change, either in content or coverage or, or even just an explanation of why we're doing this, there would be something in, in this handout. And that would be available uh, eventually on the website, I would assume, also. Okay, Donald? I think the only concern, but John's quite correct, and, and, uh, but my only concern is if we... I guess my concern would be how much we limit discussion to certain areas, because this is the summer and people will be away on vacation, and you know they they're they're not going to be able to make the meeting for the first section, but they have comment on it. So would we allow public comment in the second meeting about what we had on the prior meeting and that that sort of thing? I think, you know, I, 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 yeah. we have an obligation yeah. to the public to allow right. you know free and open discussion, and I would. Yeah. I would be very concerned about limiting that. Discussion. Oh, I don't think we, we, we couldn't limit we it. Couldn't you know, do it wouldn't yeah. happen. Well, I, I only meant yeah. that by oh. you said, well, this meeting will do like one through five and then yeah. ten through whatever on the next one. I, I wouldn't want to limit the discussion to only those items on the agenda for that night. I, I think this is evolving, but I, 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 we've had several different suggestions. And one thing we might do is do the first meeting as an overall presentation <clears throat> and allow it responses to everything. The second meeting, have a presentation that focuses on one aspect of it and begin the meeting with focus and then end it with a more open-ended thing, that, the same type of thing. So we give, that so we, we combine the focus and the open-ended, but at least give people a chance to hear in more detail about a particular yeah. area of the ordinance. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, Chris, is it? Well, I, I am concerned about doing anything like this over the summer. You know, it, it is unfair generally to people to do that. But I understand the schedule as well. So I think we just have to have uh, maybe an easy way um, with, um, you know, a web kind of mailbox or something like that where it makes it really easy to check a section and leave a comment or, you know, something that is very user-friendly because I can see that, I mean, I just check my calendar and, you know, I can only make one of them. Oh, here. Um, it, but, well, because, you know, you just sit right. and, it, and it, for me it's mainly work things, uh, not vacation. But, it, I mean, it may be hard as we start to play this out. So I think we have to go out of our way to find ways that people can comment. Yeah, Cindy. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. We're actually doing that with the comprehensive rec study. We have a, a, mm. a web mailbox set up. So we've, we've got the system for that. It's, yeah. it's pretty right. easy to do. And then we could just share the input with the planning board. It's a great exactly. idea. Or yeah. we could even give it voice <clears throat> at each of these meetings. Uh, you know, someone could actually present them out loud right. so others hear about it. It could be something the planning board does to say, we got six comments this week on. Like receiving a, a letter. And Reading right. it into the record, yeah. That's right, reading it into the yeah. record. Sure. Because we want to open public yeah. input, not close it. That's right. another great way to do it. Yeah, I guess the other thing that strikes me, too, after these low many years is, um, you know, emphasizing the, the fact that, you know, this all comes out of the master plan. And we spent a huge amount of effort putting that together, and I feel like we got a terrific amount of public input in that. So this zoning ordinance really reflects, uh, I think, you know, a lot of hard work and, and um, you know, good spectrum of public in input um, to the best that we could, and considering changes in state law and, and stuff. So it's not just kind of winging a zoning ordinance rewrite, but in this larger context of state law. Yeah, Chris. One other thought. 
Um, I can just sort of see how this might play out. Um, you know, in public hearing, we tend not to argue back with the public or even do much by way of explanation back to the public. We kind of just let this stuff sit. Um, but this might be an exception because I can see the potential for great misunderstanding of some of this. I, I will, I'm sure I will be doing that myself. Um, and so people commenting on something, if it really needs more, it's going to be a very challenging process because you, you don't want to dampen public input by each time then saying, oh, well, but you didn't really understand. That's not what we meant. Or if you'd really read the full thing or, um, you know, blah, 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 blah. On the other hand, we have the challenge of there may only be uh, one or two kinds of input on a right. particular thing. And more likely, people are going to learn what's in here by listening to that. So that process of then how do you comment to correct uh, misrepresentation or misunderstanding or further understanding without dampening public input, I think is something to really think about. Yeah, it's a good point. Cindy? I, I do think, I know what you're saying, but I think it's a real slippery slope if we it get into is. the back and forth thing, because think about some of the attorneys who might be commenting. It could be <laughs> this endless point counterpoint. What, what I would suggest is, you know, Portsmouth, Lord knows, is a unique city. Why don't we try a public hearing and see what and happens? See what it is. And, and yeah. we will be informed by that, and yeah. that might change our course of direction. Because I'll say one thing, the site review regs have been posted now for a year on the website. We've really heard from no one, one way or another. True, they haven't been adopted, but you know, these meetings have been televised. We aren't getting calls the next day yeah. from people saying, I can't believe you're considering this, or, or <laughs> what is that? I think the rubber will meet the road for the typical homeowner when they go to do something and they look at the ordinance and say, oh, I can't do that. And they look at the old ordinance and say, I used to be able to do that. So I don't think most people, I think it's too academic zoning for them. And we can try and make it as accessible as possible, but it really, my, my motto this, these days is we got a fish or cut bait. There's a lot of good stuff yeah. in here that we don't have on the books right now and we can't enforce and we can't ask right. applicants for. So I hear what everybody's wow. saying, but at some point we have to recognize it's really important that we adopt this. It's really important that we adopt the site review regs. We, we, we need to move away from the notion that we're going to be able to fully inform everyone and to make everyone happy. There will be people that are unhappy with this ordinance. Right. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So that's my concern about the point counterpoint because it could be endless. We could be here right, two right. years. I'm not suggesting point counterpoint. But that's what happens if you respond yeah. at public hearings. It never ends. I mean, you know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, do you have a suggestion? Well, no, I was, just, I was just kind of following up on that, which is to take, just take a little bit further, which is that there are going to be some problems with this ordinance. There are going to be some things that we haven't foreseen and the things that don't work. Absolutely. And we're going to, and we're going to find that out. And, and the sooner we move this forward, the sooner we'll find out those things. So I, I, my, my sense is that <laughs> it, I, I'm anxious to get it in place so that we can start working with it and figure out what, you know, what are the next steps to do. And, and so you, I, we really won't know that until it's actually in place. I mean, we can try to anticipate these things, but uh, we've, and as we've been going through this, we've been trying to say, well, what does that mean and how would you actually apply it and so forth, and especially with respect to science. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I think that we'll find a lot of areas where we, where we need to make adjustments. And um, so I guess what I'm saying is that some of these things will be people asking questions about how this is going to work, but we're really not going to know in many cases um, if, if this is better or worse. We're, we think it's going to be better, but we may find out that there's, there's something that needs to be adjusted, and we won't, we won't know it by finding out how it works. It's good. Another, you know, point that we can explain <laughs> at, the, at the hearing. Right. So, yeah, Cindy. And, and something else we should keep in mind, I think, is, you know, there are only certain sections that I think are potentially more volatile than others or that people might have more interest in, like signs. That's always a big concern. Um, signs, you know, some of the, the resource protection things. On the one hand, you have the environmental communities, the conservation community saying we love more protection. Certain homeowners that, you know, are near wetlands might think, oh, I don't feel as good about that. Um, you know, the, we've had a lot of involvement from the Conservation Commission, from the historic district. So 
There may be people who don't want to see any changes in the historic regs, but our HDC did want to see some mm -hmm. changes. So, you know, we have to keep all that in mind. It's that, that this has been a very deliberative process that w we have tried to get the input of the most key users of this thing. And, and I really think the people that are going to truly take this home and scrutinize it are big developers and attorneys for developers that, mm -hmm. that really have a big dog in mm -hmm. the fight and we'll hopefully hear from them. They may have some very useful comments for us. Yeah. Any other thoughts? ML? <laughs> no, nobody at the end there? Okay. No, no thanks. <laughs> yes. Well, just one last thing was uh, to respond, to Chris, to what you were saying about the summer, and I'm sure we, we all feel like it's not the best time, but we're at where we're yeah, at. And right. we may find, well, we need a couple more hearings yeah. in September, and this is what yeah. we're proposing now. We may find we have two or three public hearings and no one comes, no one cares. I don't yeah. know. Um, you know, we think about the master plan, typical public hearings we had. No one came. It happened in the summer. Yeah. <coughs> yes, Donald. Do you work with the media and alert them ahead of time that public hearings are being held and try to get them interested and yeah. try to get the public? Certainly. I mean, if, if you put a story in the paper, at least they'll read it. They may not come, but at least they'll be aware of what's happening. You may have to write it for them. We always write press. We'll, we write press releases all the time. We'll you want to highlight what you want to highlight and uh, let them know exactly what's going on because you know they're not in here all the time. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ML. And also, can we make sure that that web address and the way to put your comments in via email is pretty prominent in all of our announcements, all of them? Because I think even on the announcement of the public meeting. Comments received by well, that day will be, I don't know, whatever we want to do, into cited. The, into the directive. Right, and, and considered. Because I think we may get more input that way. Yeah. <clears throat> we can do that. <laughs> Let's hope that we don't get 16 pages of <laughs> single space comments. Be careful what you wish yeah. for. <laughs> <laughs> All in science. In Espanol. And maybe just one thing to clarify the board. Yes. You know, the intent is now here you have this. Read it at your leisure. But the next step will be really for others to read it and then comment. I mean, there's nothing really in here that you haven't seen. I mean, right. we right. really have had almost four dozen meetings on this. So you should read this, but the next step really will be to put it out there to the city council. They'll be receiving it very shortly. It'll be posted on the web next week. And then we will be, um, the planning board chair and staff will be meeting with the city council. Uh, we're working on scheduling that now to review it with them since they're really key to this. The city council adopts this. Yeah. Tony, did you have a comment? I have a couple specific questions. And um, where do we stand on our conversations with Atlantic Heights and their? Ah, yes. Um, that, that is one of the things I will be actually looking at as we go through the zoning uh, map uh, issues this summer uh, while this is all going on. Because it's not just Atlantic Heights. It's a, it's a larger issue of um, neighborhoods that have you know, the, where the, the, the pre-exist zoning or pre-exist current zoning and so forth. And, and we, we want to look at um, the Board of Adjustments workload and, and the types of things that, you know, whether, whether if, if there are certain types of things that are, that are frequently being, that are always being granted or that's, you know, always raising problems, decks or something, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, I know, that, I know that there's a, that there are, the people have had a handle on that, but we want to look at that and look at the, look at those areas again. Uh, and see if there are some ways we can adjust um, not just Atlantic Heights but other other particular areas for for um, dimensional regulations. The last time that we spoke with them, um, which I which was after the last time you spoke with them, um, we talked about uh, there were a variety of things. One of the one of the things we talked about was putting together some some suggested ideas and going out and having a neighborhood media, meeting and talking about those ideas, being very careful not to suggest that. Um, that 
we're coming to impose these on you, but just to, be, to get a sense, because apparently the neighborhood is not, not totally unified on, on these ideas. Um, but the, 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 the dimensional regulations as they are now are directing the Board of Adjustment in the wrong direction because they, they make it easier to essentially grant a, a front variance than a back variance or something. I can't, I can't remember the details of it, but it's, it's a, it, the way the houses are right now, that we want, there's more concern for protecting the, the front facade and less concern for protecting the rear yards and, uh, among the neighbors. And so that's one thing we want to look at and is, is how we can adjust the regulations for that very specific development, which has very specific, was d designed with very specific design guidelines and standards and make it and hope to preserve it. Yeah, Tony, did you have a second question? Yeah, second question. These are all like follow-up things yeah. that have kind of been um, footnoted in my mind. Um, the other one was uh, we were waiting to hear back from the Conservation Commission on setbacks for vernal pools. As um, Have we heard back from them? Is that in here at all? Or? Were we waiting to hear back from them on that? I think that we have so we have something in the regulations. That, yeah. we, we have something in the in the zoning on that. Well, they, we, we got a report back and it had a recommendation for setback, but they I think I asked a question at the time and Peter's response was, well, this is still under, it was a kind of a. state level. Are you thinking, you're not thinking about the prime wetlands, you're thinking about vernal? <coughs> vernal pools. We, we can look into yeah, that, but I think it, that yeah. we did incorporate everything. I think we did follow up on that incorporate everything. There was some debate about reducing, I'm sorry, increasing, increasing. no, reducing the jurisdictional wetland size. Separate issue. That was, I, was that a separate there, issue? Was there a debate? Yes. Yeah, separate issue. Separate but, issue. Yeah. Because that was sort of squashed because of the um, the scientific basis for that, I don't think was there. But well, I don't I'm not sure. No, it yeah. was resolved, yeah. <laughs> and and it is. A it is reduced. It is reduced. Yeah, it's yeah. reduced now. It's and no longer a half acre. The the, the scientific basis. I, I I think we didn't go as far as the scientific basis calls for, but because the scientific basis is much much smaller, and we went smaller. Instead of much, much smaller. You know, I think so. The, what it? Yeah. The, the, um, Let me turn read this. To that yeah. <laughs> the um, that would be an article. Uh, Page one twenty-eight. Thank you. About vernal pools. No, I wasn't thinking about vernal pools. No, but jurisdictional but, wetlands. Well, it's in that area. Yeah, yeah. that's jurisdictional areas. Ten thousand square feet, quarter acre. The reason that sticks in my mind, because that was one of the three times in 12 years that Attorney Sullivan and I agreed on something, which was the need, in order to have it hold up in court, the need for a scientific basis for reducing the, um, the amount of space. Because we used the parallel from, we went from, I think it was 50 to 100 feet or maybe 75 to 100 feet on the wetland buffer. And there was a huge discussion at that time of scientific basis. There's a very strong scientific basis for this. And I think that the, I think it's a, I don't think that the scientific basis for this is in question. I think, I think that the, the recommend, one of the recommendations was 5,000 square feet. So, I, you know, we're quite, we're quite a bit above that. I think that, I think that was it. And so you sort of compromise and went to 10. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I do hope that scientific basis is there. It is. There's, a, there's, actually, a, there's actually a formal study. Other than smaller yeah. is better, you know. I mean, yeah, there's a formal study that talks about uh, the types of um, critters that, that need to be protected. Okay, good. Yes, Chris. Um, Rick's mentioning the Board of Adjustment uh, raises a question for me. Do we expect our other boards, if they wish to um, weigh in, that they would be at public comment, or are we expecting them to do something different? I, we've uh, suggested that they that they well they could do either but we've suggested that they they respond to us as a board as a board, uh, as a board. yeah because we've had all these discussions internally and we don't want to and there are disagreements within the boards and sure. we don't want to have board members sure. saying I'm a member of such and such and this is what I think yeah Donald just a clarification um, the memo says proposed meeting schedule. May we assume that this is now no longer proposed? Well, it's up to you. This is, we're proposing it to you tonight. So. All right. Do you need a formal <laughs> vote or well, At least no. a consensus. No, so, I, mean, I mean, you can just direct staff to go ahead and schedule. The, the room, this room, and the ability to televise is available on these dates. And I mean, so. if, if we wanted to depart from Thursday's schedule, we could conceivably do that. But 
you know how busy this room is on other nights. Yeah. So, and, and it's really important to televise it. And if I, if I can just make one other comment, we've met or in the process, we're almost done yeah. meeting with, yeah. with the chairs of each of the boards, BOA, HDC, and CONCOM, to say, here it is, and to transmit that message that it would be most useful, we feel, to this board to speak as a unified board, or, you know, rather than having individuals. But, you know, of course, individual residents can comment in any way they want. But we don't want to go back to each board and revisit this, or we will be here 10 years from now to adopt this. And, and I'm not kidding. I mean, yeah. we, we have come a long way. This was a major overhaul of the zoning ordinance and our site review regs, and we have accomplished much. But we, we don't want to continue at the same pace that we're going. We want to get this on the books so we can enforce it because I think that's what the community wants overall. And, and we do need to keep in mind this isn't set in stone for the next 50 years. Right. We may be making revisions, and it's quite typical to adopt a new zoning ordinance and then communities make a lot of revisions in the next couple of years. I, I think along that, that line, I would hope that we would um, be able to do perhaps an annual package of, of uh, edits, you know, just accumulate, accumulate them over a period of time and, and perhaps in the, each fall uh, come and, and say, here, here are some suggested changes to some tune-ups, essentially, right. for the ordinance. Okay. Other thoughts, questions? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So we drop, You're we drop so a pretty heavy dump. Yes, <laughs> ML. I just like to ask staff: Is there any particular approach you would like us to take in our read through and review? I mean, is there anything that you would like us to focus on? Read this and this together? Anything like no, that? No, no. I think you, I mean, you've really you've really looked at all of the bits and pieces of this. So I think the way to do it is to just look at it as a whole and and uh, say we're not we're not asking for you to. Um, to really do a, a, a fine tooth comb, uh, but you're welcome to do that if that is what turns you on. So the next <laughs> time will be July 9th for a discussion on this. Yes. I won't be here. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll have a web address that you can submit your comments on. <laughs> Actually, I might be able to, oh, I could do that. We'll be on TV. Yeah, I'll be on Monhegan Island. So, And then, of course, August 6th is the night before the tall ships show up, so that's going to be a little busy. So. I'm going to be like Chris. I'm going to miss a bunch of these. I know. Yes, yeah, Cindy? And to exactly that point, yeah. remember, th these are primarily public hearings. Right. And we would be happy to make, if anybody wants copies of the tape, or you can, you know, web stream it or whatever. Yeah, I'll stream it, yeah. Um, so anybody who wants to hear those comments that can't make the meetings, just let us know. We'll get you, we'll get you the uh, technology to do that. Good, good, good. <clears throat> Good. Any other lingering comments? Just one lingering. Do we want to get a uh, kind of consensus here that, that people are okay with this schedule? This schedule. I mean, it's we, good. <laughs> Norm, thumbs up. Thumbs up. How, thumbs up? How many Double. thumbs up? <laughs> is that a... Especially since we can get, this, yes. get the technology, yeah. Yeah. you know. Silence is affirmation. <laughs> That's and, right. And, and when, when, it, it, when we have meetings and not all board members are present, we will remind the public that the board members not present are actively monitoring this and are listening to public input so thank you remember to do that I'll have a drink, <laughs> have a drink in my hand as i sit on monhegan island Miranda. <laughs> wow thank that you, was man. great oh my gosh thank you, thank you. Great. Thanks. Oh, thank you. you guys are working hard you, you, you got here